Hi everyone, I think we are ready to start. Um, really glad to be here. My name is Sergey. For like about 10 years, I'm working on Kotlin and Android infrastructure now at Meta. Um, really excited to be here at Kotlin Conf. It's my first one. Um, this talk is probably the last thing between you and uh, lunch. So let's make it fast. Uh, we are talking about Bug2 today. And what is Bug2? It's a build system, a successor of Bug. So this is why we have two there in the name. Uh, Bug was uh, created long ago and uh, open source before there was anything large scale available on the market. It supports C++, Rust, Python, Go, and uh, starting today, it uh, supports Kotlin and Android development as in uh, alpha version. So the build system is developed at Meta and uh, available at open source. Um, support, as I said, is in alpha. There are no external users yet because it's just uh, available outside for a few days. Um, however, internally we built Meta Android code base with Bug2 for like more than three years now. It operates over 20 million lines of Kotlin codes and Java codes, and it's like the number is growing and growing, especially with AI, and it's the only uh, mention of AI I promise in this talk. Um, the build system Bug2 is designed for large monorepos but could, be hand, uh, could handle a small project as well. Our huge Android focus is an ability to iterate and uh, build really fast. So at a high level, Bug2 architecture consists of like three layers. Core, which is a language agnostic part of the system. It runs build graph. It's uh, responsible for managing the language that our users write rules in, uh, responsible for the overall ecosystem performance, parallelism, incrementality, I.O., and uh, remote execution. Then there is a rule layer. The rule layer is where we define how we build things in ecosystem, at tool chains and things like this. There is where compilers are integrated and uh, we define how we interact with KPT, KSP, uh, any bytecode optimizers like uh, R8, ProGuard, Redex, anything like this. Uh, Dexers as well. We translate bytecode here. So in a rule layer, you can be as uh, creative as you, as you want, delivering your uh, rules to everyone in the company or a subset of targets. And then finally, a target or uh, some build system call it a module uh, definition layer. Here you put declarations of the targets, an activity code, or a microservice code, or maybe just a command line tool. And here how it looks like in the declarative definition. You have a rule that you basically execute. It's a declarative code. And like a cool thing here, if you look at the depths, uh, part of the rule, you will not see any versions here. So this is because we push the central configuration from, for versions from day one. But what you see, you see a configuration for sources, a manifest file, visibility, everything that a engineer could understand. And let's be honest, for a build system, it's important not to be annoying. Uh, most of the time, we don't want to interact with it, and Bug2 follows this principle for the majority of cases. Define a library, build it, probably add dependencies as you write code, maybe even automatically in the ID with completion, and done. Build it, test it, install it, once module is declared. Run an emulator if you want. But it's quite hard to make an entertaining demo of a build system. Once you start a build, it's like a black screen, and the only thing is you're thinking about is, oh my god, let us finish faster. Um, but 
when you start the build, what Buck is doing, it's dynamically unfolding and computing the build draft, so it reaches the root level of parallelism utilizing your CPU cores. Some actions will be executed on the local machine, the others would be in remote execution if the server is, if is configured. Uh, if you're building for the first time, Buck is going to first initiate the build of the, your build system. It will create everything, download required artifacts. So it might be slow, but as long as we move to the second, the third build, and so on, first of all, you are getting the caches, and then uh, everyone contributes to a global cache. So if your uh, colleague already built it earlier today, you are getting it almost for free. You're downloading cache, you're good. But let's say you want to do something more special. Uh, change the version of a Kotlin that is used everywhere in your project. Or maybe you just want to say, hello, Kotlin conf somewhere in your uh, bug build. Uh, then rule layer is for you. You no longer need uh, something declarative. You want to have uh, an imperative way of uh, defining stuff. So you get into the dialect of Python called Skylark, and it's specifically for build system. It's also in open source. Um, you write a rule. It's almost the Python code with the focus on immutability, and then you enjoy running it. We expect experienced users and uh, infra engineers to mainly work here in this layer. Um, and we build again. Now, let's see, we, we have a hello message for almost every uh, time we interact with the Android rule as, from, uh, we, as the one we had before. Why so many times? Uh, because some parallelism takes place in uh, these bug builds and uh, we get things fast. Uh, but what if you're a build system expert and uh, figure out a way to improve uh, how you or your build system interacts with the file buffers or you know how to integrate the new shiny virtual file system? Okay, um, have any other idea how to parallelize the build graph? First of all, hello. Uh, my respect. Uh, we likely know each other. If not, uh, let's uh, catch up on LinkedIn. Uh, but then we're welcome to our bug 2 core. It's a Rust code, uh, so it exposes services and APIs to the Skylark layer, and everything language agnostic could be defined there. Uh, we have a significant focus on the fast iteration, so performance is very critical. Uh, when you think about the build system performance, uh, there is like a large portion of like a very basic one on one on one things, and then some advanced. Let's just get into them. So parallelization. We want to utilize uh, all possible uh, CPU without you even paying attention to this. Uh, if something didn't change, there is no need to build. There is a cache. There is a global cache, local one, and uh, like if anyone build something with a certain input, uh, if you use global cache, then everyone in the company and the group are getting benefits from it. So the build system as but 2 is uh, pause free, so there is no GC, it's a Rust code. And uh, we aim to have like absolutely no repo wide action, so uh, we never have to iterate over the whole repository. Then there are some advanced things. Uh, lazy computation of the build drop really allows you to have a subset of the build drop in memory, so it unfolds iteratively. And the global cache I already mentioned, so something changed deep in the stack, probably you call, call it already built it and you benefit. And finally, remote execution. Uh, if your parallelism is higher than the number of uh, CPUs, you have a number of cores, then you ask a remote server to build something for you, you get it faster, cheaper, um, everyone is good. Um, but like, what, what it gets to build also an Android and Kotlin stuff faster, it's uh, another big problem. Uh, this is how, a, how we 
see the build draft whenever we, we do our builds. But this is how the build system looks at it. So it introduces the intermediate ABI, uh, ABI layers to increase the chance of hitting the cache and uh, build faster. And uh, to supercharge our build draft parallel computation for both Java and Kotlin, we built a compiler-based technique to flatten the build draft. So this technique allows us to build ABIs without knowing an exact uh, set of their dependencies, only looking at the source code. It works for a subset of Kotlin and uh, available in uh, BAT2. Uh, significantly cutting the critical path in some cases. So you get a uh, faster critical path, with the, uh, which is a fundamental uh, problem of the any build system that critical path is something you cannot parallelize, and then you parallelize everything else, utilizing all available resources. Uh, then we do smart dependency tracking. Let's say we have a module A and module B, A depends on B, uh, but we use only a subset of uh, B in the module A. So what we can do, uh, and what we are doing, uh, computing our build graph, we say that, okay, B is not one module, but it consists on several ones, and let's don't care about the changes in orange and banana that could happen there, but only rebuild B if Apple change and we need uh, to rebuild A. So it called the smart dependency tracking. And finally, we have uh, a two level incrementality. So a build draft uh, incrementality that uh, rebuilds only a part of the draft that changed and the transitive changes as well. It's powered by the bug core and its language agnostic. And then the compiler level incrementality that uh, rebuilds things uh, where if only a few classes within the target or module were changed. And it's powered by a new build tool API. So we're really excited about uh, both of them. And uh, in combination, they really reach the level of incrementality that required for, our, for us to ship much, much faster. So, some takeaways about adopting non-adopting bug. Um, let's say we uh, let's start with the cons. Changing build system is hard. We don't expect anyone to do this, but it's uh, it's good to have a build system in an open source because, uh, like a lot of optimizations, there are language agnostic. A lot of optimizations there are build system agnostic as well. So we really hope the community will benefit from, from this and will benefit from the community inputs. And uh, BAC2 Android support is very new. However, the BAC2 overall as a core is an open source for two years now. Uh, we really want people to give it a try and uh, give us some feedback, especially benchmarks uh, comparing us to others. We'll be really looking into this and uh, paying a lot of attention. Package management is still in the uh, closed source uh, solution available through the binaries, but uh, we are going to change it soon. And on the positive side, uh, BAC2 is very highly parallelizable, which makes it a powerful, fast, and modern build system. It has a very opinionated approach to the optimizations we are uh, getting into. Let's say if something doesn't work well in Kotlin and Android, we better not provide any integration. Let's say we think KPT in its first iteration is very bad. Let's just like drop the support for KPT entirely and ask users to do different things, but ensuring we do things fast. And it's an open source. Uh, it's the only difference from the uh, internal solution that we built uh, at Meta is the remote execution server and its configuration. Everything else uh, you can see in open source is almost identical to the uh, things we use internally, including all optimizations. So it's about 15 minutes time to get the uh, source code from whatever we commit internally. And of course, we accept pull requests, and we'll be very happy to get those. Thanks a lot. Um, it was uh, great giving a talk here, and uh, I'll be at the conference for the rest of the day. We'll be very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. <laughs>